After blatantly plagiarizing Ridge Racer with Circuit Beat in 1996, Prism Art set its sights on another arcade hit two years later, Sega Rally. They then released a series of two games, largely unknown to most gamers, Rally to Africa and Rally to Europe, released in 1998 and 2000 respectively, at the exceptionally low price of 1,500 yen. On paper, Prism Art seemed unlikely to succeed in rally games where it had previously failed in arcade racing. Although they're two distinct games, Rally to Africa and Rally to Europe share many similarities, warranting a combined review. Perhaps they'll surprise us. Apart from a few differences, both games share the same main menu, consisting of a championship mode, single race, two players, and duel, not to mention the options. Released in 1998, Rally to Africa feels technically like a first-generation PlayStation game. Still, its visuals remain engaging. The simplicity of the 3D models and textures conceal a rustic but clear and readable game that's still enjoyable in 2023. Despite the title and course locations suggesting a lack of scenery variety, that's not the case, given Africa's diverse landscapes. Its sequel, released just two years later, unsurprisingly looks better with greater detail, finer textures, and improved car models. Offering even more varied environments, players race through numerous tracks set in Europe. Rally de Europe is undoubtedly a beautiful PS1 game. Running at a solid 30 frames per second, Rally de Africa's frame rate remains consistent, even when competitors cluster around you. The smoothness with which your car turns, drifts, jumps, or hits rivals greatly enhances the gaming experience. The scrolling speed beyond Group A is more than convincing. The only downsides are occasional pop-ins and texture flickering, but let's face it, that was common for the console. The sequel doesn't differ dramatically, which is a good thing. However, there's noticeable optimization in draw distance and texture stability. Sound-wise, Rally to Africa leans into African cliches. We get the typical world music infused with Afrobeat and tribal sounds, occasionally sprinkled with techno. Still, they're pleasant to hear, and the ability to select them before a race is A+. Engine sounds vary, sometimes evoking a powerful car, and at other times, resembling a lawnmower. Rally de Europe's soundtrack feels like it's lifted from a Ridge Racer episode, with a more techno and rock direction. Again, players can select music before each race. Sound effects, including the digital voices, are mostly from the first game, but with added realistic exhaust sounds. Aside from Sega Rally, I've never been a fan of Rally games, often finding them too austere. From the get-go, Rally to Africa felt like a breath of fresh air, showcasing fluid and dynamic controls. The drift-centric driving is somewhat tricky, but doesn't detract from the fun. As new cars and races are unlocked in groups B and S, the game's true potential unfolds. It's unfortunate that the hitbox isn't the most accurate, making avoiding opponents a frequent challenge during races. Rally de Europe isn't a significant departure from its predecessor but offers improved flexibility and precision in controls, making driving even smoother and more technical. Tracks have become more winding and narrow, demanding better braking and turn anticipation. The car's attributes have been balanced, making almost all of them appealing. Importantly, AI and hitbox issues have been fixed. Simply put, it's a better rally to Africa. I'd even say it's one of the most enjoyable rally games on PS1, with fantastic driving sensations. A real treat. Rally to Africa consists of six tracks, each taking around two minutes. In 1998, that felt limited. However, considering the stage-by-stage -stage racing format, inherently shorter, it makes sense. Plus, the 15 vehicles offer a broad range of driving styles, from trucks to 4x4s, based on four different criteria. The apparent ease in Group A is deceptive, completing the three championships requires practice. The inclusion of a split-screen two-player mode is a bonus, though it's somewhat lazy, limited to a head-to-head -head race. Its successor steps up, not just in content, but also in depth and enjoyment, thanks to optimized gameplay. The content has also expanded. There are now 20 cars, 5 per group, filling your garage, not counting color variants. Even without official licenses, they're easily recognizable. Impressively, once you finish the championship mode, all Rally to Africa tracks are unlocked, totaling 12 races. 
This makes the first game seem obsolete and ensures Rally de Europe has robust longevity. A crucial detail, players can now save their game anytime. Versus Comparing an obscure game like Rally de Europe to the legendary Sega Rally might seem bold. A critical and commercial success, Sega's racing game was groundbreaking upon release due to its technological edge and perfect gameplay. It's still considered the gold standard for arcade-style rally games. Sega Rally Saturn port did it justice, both technically and gameplay-wise. That's precisely where Prism Art shamelessly drew its inspiration. Tracks, car behavior, co-driver comments, and even on-screen direction arrows were unabashedly copied. But is this a flaw if executed well? As we've seen, Rally de Europe has a solid foundation that stands comparison. Does it match the iconic game? It's hard to compete with Sega Rally's technical prowess and charm, with its advanced 3D models, warmer colors, and iconic settings. Gameplay-wise, Sega's title is renowned for blending arcade fun with a touch of simulation, especially by mimicking track surface properties affecting drivability, giving unparalleled driving sensations. Rally de Europe, however, holds its own, offering nuanced and excellent driving feelings. While more accessible, it seems more conventional than Sega Rally and may lack the same gameplay depth. This is evident in Sega's title's extraordinary longevity. However, Prism Art's game offers more content in terms of races and cars. A significant advantage, but it can't entirely overshadow other criteria. As expected, while Rally de Europe has all the qualities for this comparison, it doesn't emerge victorious. Wins! While Rally de Europe may not match the giant that is Sega Rally, it's an excellent arcade-style rally game. Its value is astonishing given its low budget, recall it was priced 4 to 5 times cheaper than a typical game and made by complete unknowns. Labeling it a hidden gem feels apt, given the stark contrast between its obscurity and quality. Primarily, this applies to the second game, superior in every aspect. It's the one to prioritize. 